Well, you probably know by now that I just came off of one of the peak experiences of my life, and, well, I just have to tell you all about it. Several months ago, one of the cameramen and editors here at PJTV asked me if I wanted to go to Guantanamo Bay as part of a morale tour staged by a remarkable band called Bridge of Sighs. They'd played there several times before. In fact, Bridge of Sighs has a hit song called Freedom Stain from their current CD called Angry Clouds. It's available at iTunes and Amazon. That was actually written on a previous trip of theirs at a late night barracks get together in Gitmo. Now, even more amazing, these guys see eye to eye with me on pretty much every issue facing America today. So when the band got invited back to Gitmo and they wanted to know if I wanted to go with them to lift some crates, shoot some footage, help MC, and maybe say a few motivational words to the troops that I and they value so much, I didn't just say yes, I said hell yes, right now. So what you're about to see is just a brief retelling of my first real experience inside the U.S. military, told through video and still pictures and a series of voice notes I made along the way. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my Gitmo Diary. Well, we started out before dawn outside of the PJTV studio on Monday, November 2nd, and headed just about a mile or two down the road to LAX. The PJTV contingent consisted of Libor, the cameraman, uh, Laura, one of our producers, and of course, my buddy Steve Crowder, who was going down to do some of his comedy for the troops. I'd been briefed by Bridge of Size co-founder and lead guitarist Tom Neely once before the trip, so Monday morning was my first chance to meet the guys in the band, co-founder, bass player, and lead vocalist Trent Stroh, the new Bridge of Size drummer Ryan Brown, and as extra Gitmo firepower for this trip due to the three hour long sets that BOS would play, guest vocalist Perk. Yeah, just Perk. One name's all you need when you're a guest rock singer. Day one was just a long, grinding day of commercial air travel. LA to Washington, Dulles, then a hop down to Jacksonville International, and finally, a 45 minute van ride to Naval Air Station Jacksonville for the evening. And that was my first taste of life on a base, and frankly, it's a little shocking. You know, the guest facility at NAS Jacksonville was probably built in the 40s, and it looked it. I wanna be crystal clear on this point, it was immaculately, spotlessly clean, but there's not a hotel in America today that could afford to stay in business with so little attention paid to the physical decor. So that was the first real thought I had as I headed to bed on that first night, that our military is like America's youngest kid brother, last of seven, let's say, who in my opinion deserves the best of everything, but instead gets the oldest and most worn out hand-me-downs every time. That was Monday. <laughs> Well, Tuesday morning, bright and early, while we were waiting for our van ride to the terminal, we saw a foreign air crew emerge from our visitors' quarters. They were wearing the Pakistani flag on their shoulders, and since I had some time to kill, I went over and started talking in one of the international languages, airplanes. These Pakistanis, like other crews from the scores of different nations that train here in the U.S., are going to be treated as equals and as fellow aviators, many of them will be treated like friends, maybe get invited to barbecues or perhaps head on down to Disney World just an hour or two away. And what they take back home with them will undo so many of the lies that they've been told about us. These are the best ambassadors for America we can ever hope to have. And then it was on to the terminal for the military charter flight to Guantanamo freaking Bay. I'm on the way to Lafayette. Uh, another important thing in the waiting room there, the flight was um, significantly delayed getting out and you get a sense of military time, you know, it's like you have orders to be in a certain location, you're getting there as soon as you can, there's nothing that you can do about it, there's no, you're not getting paid by the hour. Um, just this whole sense of, well, I'm going to get where I get when I get there, I'm on the plane I'm supposed to be on, and it really is a different uh, time scale, it's nothing like what you're used to in the civilian world in terms of rental cars and speeding up or slowing down or it's i mean even you know four hours into this adventure i'm starting to get a sense of that already 
pilot of the Delta flight, used to fly E-3 Orions. Then, all of a sudden, I'm on a chartered Delta flight to a little piece of America in the heart of one of the last communist regimes in the entire world. Delta flight is terrific. They put a, somebody taped an American flag and a United We Stand thing up on a front bulkhead for this, uh, for this flight. And um, I don't know why they have to take that down for domestic flights. I just spoke to a flight attendant about whether or not she um, feels any different on these military flights. And she says she does. Everybody just seems friendlier and trying harder and that little sign up in the front. And, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's different. So I can see Cuba up ahead and oh, a whole lot of open ocean down there. Makes you wonder how many people just disappeared out there trying to get to freedom and just lost their way. Just went under or out to sea or up the coast or whatever. It's a whole lot of water. And that's a lot, a lot of water from 37,000 feet. I think at the surface it must just seem endless. You know, and this didn't fully hit me until the flight back, but the amazing thing about the Cuban coast is it's all beachfront and no beachfront property. None. Zero. I didn't see any buildings, I didn't see any villages, or any cities or structures of any kind in the 30 minutes it takes to fly around the southern corner of the island. You feel like Columbus seeing the place for the first time. Now, I have heard, and this is just bizarre enough to be actually true, that there are two ways to land at Guantanamo Bay. One is routine for a commercial flight. It's a five mile straight in final approach that requires overflying Cuban territory. Or on the other hand, a radical hard right bank at very low level to stay within the bounds of the American lease agreement. What determines which one you get? Well, I hear, are you ready for this? That most of the flights down to Gitmo carry boxes of hot Krispy Kreme donuts. And they are loaded straight from the bakery in Jacksonville and delivered to the Cubans on the other side of the red line. If they get their Krispy Kremes, we get the straight in approach. If they don't, it's the slam dunk on final. Well, it looks like they got their damn donuts. I never get to have any fun. I want you to remember that no bastard ever won a war by dying for his country. Won it by making the other poor dumb bastard die for his country. On the ground, and I just uh, really surprised at how how pretty Cuba is. It's uh, really mountainous, a lot, a lot hillier than I thought it would be. Really nice. Uh, not, not at all what you would expect, you know, not, not tropical at all. It looks almost like um, parts of Northern California or something. Guantanamo Bay. And there is Guantanamo Bay. I could do without the freaking. Now, the actual airstrip is on one side of the opening of Guantanamo Bay, the leeward side. Most of the facilities, including our quarters, are on the windward side. And that requires about a half hour ferry ride, a packed ferry ride. took a uh, you know, probably 20, 30 minute um, ferry ride from the leeward side to the windward side. And it's hot out there. And um, even in November, that sun is leaning on you like it used to lean on me back in South Florida. And man, you, you walk into a dark, modern room with that air conditioning blasting and the first thing it hits you is like civilization. Good God, that's a nice feeling. So these these quarters are fantastic. I mean, I I cheerfully live in an apartment like this. This is really nice, much nicer than uh, Jacksonville. I guess Jacksonville's just an older station, but this is um, this is great. This is just great. Anyway, once we got situated, it was off to O'Kelly's for dinner and a chance to get our plan together. Cheers. 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 Well Well, if part one of my Gitmo diary was getting there, part two is being there.
You came for the sizzle, why not stay for the steak? Look for part two of my Gitmo Diary right here at PJTV.